Okay, guys. Um, let us try to answer questions on enzymes. I I thought it would be a good idea if we go through a couple of questions on en exam questions on enzymes. Uh, have, because we've we, we, we've we've been doing enzymes for the past I don't know two days or three days, and uh, it will be good for us to practice actual exam questions and see if we can really answer exam questions using what we've learned. Okay, so I have, I have a question here. I think it's a good question. Let's go ahead and answer it. I would encourage you to do this. As we are going to be answering these questions, you can pause the video before I give you the actual answer. Try to answer the question on your own. And then play it again to see if you've got the answer correct or you need to work on your answer. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Question nine says, uh, two samples of a human enzyme were used in an experiment. Before they were used, sample X was heated to 80 degrees Celsius, then K, cooled to 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, sample Y was cooled to zero degrees, then heated to 37 degrees Celsius. How will this affect their enzyme activity? So I usually encourage my students to read the question about three times okay like three times read the question three times first one just to guess what's what what they are talking about just a rough understand so the second one i'm going to read to understand so two samples of a human enzyme were used in an experiment okay so before they were used sample x was heated all right so they heated to 80 degrees celsius and then cool it back to 37. now what's so funny about 37 or interesting that Remember in the video we said 37 is the optimum temperature, so we expect best enzyme activity at 37. So first, before it goes to 37, they heat it to 80 degrees Celsius. And remember what we said about heating enzyme to 80 degrees or beyond 50 degrees Celsius, we said the enzyme gets denatured, right? So what is denaturation of enzyme? You know, denaturation of enzyme is permanent damage caused to an enzyme, okay? So this sample, the enzymes were permanently damaged. Y was cooled to zero degrees Celsius, then heated to 37 degrees Celsius. All right, so they cool it down and then they heat it. So remember, yeah, cooling down doesn't really uh, involve denaturation of the enzyme because uh, it doesn't really destroy the enzyme. It might cool them, it might cool them down to or bring the slow down the reaction, but it doesn't really destroy the active site really apart from them being beyond last time we said it should be 50 degrees and beyond for the enzyme to be denatured okay so how will this affect their activity sample x and sample y are no longer active i don't think so they are still active sample x and y will be equally active not really they won't be equally active sample x and y will be more than sample y what do you think? Not really, because remember, sample X is something which was heated to 80 degrees Celsius. Most of the enzymes were destroyed, and we don't really expect it to work better. Okay, sample Y will be more active than sample X. This is correct because we can see from this is correct because we can see that sample Y was cooled down to zero degrees, but then heated back to. 37 degrees, which of course is the optimum temperature for enzyme controlled reactions in the human body. The optimum temperature for enzyme controlled reactions in the human body, 37 degrees Celsius. Hey, so our answer here is Y. Alright, let's look at this one. The graph shows the activity of three digestive enzymes at different pH levels. So we've got enzyme activity here like we have been doing and this time we're talking about pH, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 12. We've got enzyme X, Y, and enzyme Z with different graphs. This graph here is for enzyme X, this graph here is for enzyme Y, and this one is for enzyme Z. So which statement is correct? You can see. Alright, okay. Uh, a enzymes X and Y are both active at pH seven. Okay, pH seven. Let's look at pH seven. Uh, pH seven. We have got this one. Uh, we're looking at enzyme. Okay, enzyme Y. We see it's active there. 
there's some activity but enzyme x not really it ends on six here so enzyme x is not active at ph7 this is wrong enzymes x and y are both active at ph4 ph4 so ph4 enzyme z is not active there you can see there's nothing on z So enzyme Z is not active. So enzyme Z is not active there. This one's wrong. Enzymes Y and Z are both active at pH 4. Wrong. So should be we are left with D. Enzyme Y and Z are both active at pH 8. pH 8, we've got activity there for Z, correct? Again, if we go from pH 8, we've got an activity there for Y. Okay, correct. So our answer is D. Okay, I don't know why we're getting D as the answer all the time. But anyway, D is the answer. Correct. Alright, let's answer this question. Question number four. Alright, let's answer this question. Question number four. The diagram represents the lock and key mechanism of an enzyme that works best at pH 7. So the optimum is at seven. Now enzyme and that's the substrate. You know the difference between by, by now. So what shows the enzyme and its substrate at pH thirteen? So pH thirteen, what do you expect to happen? Uh, pH thirteen is very far from seven. You have eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in between. So uh we expect this enzyme to be denatured at 13 definitely i expect it to be denatured at 13 so denaturing means deforming one of these has to be deformed which one the enzyme of course because it's the one which changes um its active site when it has been deformed uh not the substrate okay so what shows the enzyme is also at ph14 a there and is still normal i don't think so wrong e Okay, it remains the same. No. See, this changes. This remains the same. This is correct. Uh, both change. Uh, changes. No, they don't. So this no. The answer is C. Okay, the enzyme changes, but the substrate remains the same because it's going to be denatured. Okay, substrate do not get denatured. They just remain substrates as they are. 